Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly. In this small video, I'm going to be discussing the data flow in your Swift UI applications. We are not really going to be writing much code in this particular video, but the concepts that we will be discussing will be very, very important. So let's get started. Let's say that I'm building an app for a dashboard and I need to display a list of tasks. It can be anything like a to-do list and list of stocks, like a normal kind of a dashboard. So I have my different views. This is my task view, which displays a list of tasks. Well, it doesn't display anything, but let's just say that it does. And here's my stock view, which will display a list of stocks. Great. Now here's a million dollar question. If all of these two controls, task view and stock view, is going to be displayed as a child view to your dashboard view, then where should I be fetching this data? And we're assuming that you're going to fetch data for the stocks from some API, and you're going to fetch the task from some API. Now think about it, because most of the time what you will do or developers will do is start typing code into the stocks view. So stocks view will also be responsible or become responsible for downloading the data from some stocks website and populating it. And same is true for task view. They're going to access some database or service, download all the tasks and then display it. This technique is not really good. The reason is that you have now given the stocks view additional work of not only to display the stocks view, but also to download and make a request and consume information related to stocks view. And if something changes in the stocks view, you have to jump into the stocks view and change that code. The stocks view should only be responsible for displaying the stocks that you're passing to it. So the main or a better way of doing things is that the dashboard view, which is the parent view of task view and stocks view will be responsible for downloading the data and then giving it to the appropriate views. Now, I already have made a dashboard view model, which is going to give me the stocks and the task. And I can actually use this in my dashboard view. So I'm going to go ahead and say object binding private var dashboard view model. And I will simply go ahead and initialize my dashboard view model. By simply initializing it, it will eventually download all the stuff. And now I can actually go ahead and use it. So I can create a vertical stack and I can create my task view. And task view, in order to create it, you need to pass in the task. Well, that, those are already downloaded, so I can simply pass in the task. See, the data is going from the parent to the child, and the child is only responsible for displaying the data, but not fetching the data. So stocks view, stocks, dashboard, dot stocks. So why is this technique much better? The, the reason this technique is much better is that now your stocks view is completely independent of what stocks you are displaying. You can pass a stock view, you can give it to your friends, you can give it to other developers or use it in a different library and you can simply pass it the stocks and it will, well, do its job and display the stocks. So that's why we have made sure that the stocks view is completely independent and also the task view is completely independent of actually downloading the stocks. And the only thing stocks view and task view are doing is simply load, I mean, simply displaying the information, not loading it. The part of loading is now for the dashboard view. Well, actually the part of loading is inside the dashboard view model and they are loaded by some other place but the dashboard view is passing down the information. That's important to note, passing down the information to the child views. So now both of these child views that you have is simply using the data passed down to them to simply display the data, and that's it. They are not responsible for fetching the data. They are not responsible for any of those things. 
they're only responsible for displaying the data. So this is the data flow in your Surf UI application. Um, and this, since Surf UI has been inspired from Flutter, which has been inspired from React Native, this is a very common approach throughout the whole three different frameworks that we are talking about. And this allows us to create views which are completely independent of doing any kind of a service call or anything and only displaying the data. And this makes them much more reusable in the end. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my course, Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is a seven hour course with 73 lectures and it talks about every single thing about Surf UI. You can see that we start with combining views and then building list and navigation, building even a grid, understanding state and binding, and then we even jump into MVVM design pattern and implement a complete app using MVVM design pattern connected through a web service. After that, you can see that we cover property wrappers, forms, models, and so much more. And I keep on adding new content as I learn new things. I keep on adding content. Um, so this is your course. You can see this is the highest rated course on Udemy with 572 students. And if you want to enroll in this course, simply go to the YouTube description and you will find a link to this course and many of my other courses also. So do check them out also and click on the link and get the best deal possible. So you can get the course for only $9.99 and I highly recommend that you use the coupons that I have added uh, because if you use the coupon, you will get the best deal and I get to keep 90% of the sale, which is $9.99 of 90%. So thank you so much for supporting me. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much.